So what's going on, guys? This is Leslie with Melanin Fitness Nation. Guess what? I got another one of our kin folks here. Marvin is here, and he is sharing space with me today. So we get to learn all about him, get the tea, get the scoop, get to be nosy. And also, you're going to get to see how you can support him in his business. So let's get into it, Marvin. So I like to start this out a little spicy. <laughs> okay. um, I'm going to put you on the clock because, you know, in CrossFit, we love clocks. And um, we are going to do 60 seconds. And I want you to tell us anything about yourself in 60 seconds, no matter what it is. It does not have to be fitness related or anything like that. And you have three seconds. Two, go. All right. So uh, I am Marvin Mayweather, born and raised in Gary, Indiana. I uh, completed my undergraduate at Tuskegee University, graduate degree at University of Illinois in Champaign. Uh, currently the owner and only therapist at Be Strong Mental Health Therapeutic uh, Services, and I'm also the head coach at Real Splitter Fitness here in Springfield, Illinois. Um, my favorite movement, let's think about that. It is probably deadlift. I max out at 615 right now. Um, it's a little old. Hopefully I can get back to it. Uh, least favorite movement, probably anything with gymnastics. I'm a big fella. So moving, uh, you know, getting over the bar, getting up and down the rope, I can do it, but it just ain't fun moving all this weight. Um, you got two dogs, they're beagles. They're super dope. I got a beautiful wife. We just got married in October. Uh, you know, she put up with me during COVID. So I figured it was time to put a ring on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do I need? You need to know about me. No kids. Uh, not interested in those yet. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an open book pretty much. Ooh, that That's was a lot. It. <laughs> <laughs> it got me over here sweating like I'm really doing the wide or something. It's great. It's great. Thank you so much. Congrats on getting married. That's always great. Black love. Sending you tons yeah. of success. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk yeah. about your fitness journey and how you started. Okay, so I started cross officially started CrossFit in December of 2014. Um, I had saw CrossFit. I originally saw CrossFit probably back in like maybe 2010, 2012, something like that on ESPN. Uh, I'm like, oh, that's dope. Like they out here moving. Like I'm a Khalid. I was a D2 baseball player at Tuskegee, uh, and it was like, oh, okay, you know, I think I can I can get into that. But then once you look into it, CrossFit is way too expensive. You know, especially for a broke college student. So uh, after I finished grad school, you know, I tried to work out on my own. Uh, I made the decision like, all right, if I'm really going to do this in order to afford it, I got to cut out fast food and I got to cut out some of the drinking. So that was the way I paid for CrossFit, you know, locked in on all the money, the weekend activities and all the fast food stuff I was buying. And that was how I paid for my my membership. Uh, fast forward, I left. I started a little small uh, gym, moved out here to Springfield uh, probably a couple of years later. Eventually it was like, you know, I'm doing this enough. I'm in here so much. I might as well get my level one. Uh, so I got my level one, started co coaching uh, at Rail Splitter Fitness. Uh, they he actually just sold the gym recently. So now I am the, the accepted head coach now. <laughs> so, so it's been a long journey. I started in 2014 and here we are in 2023. Congrats. So talk about your gym culture. You're in Indiana. Uh, right? Illinois. 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 Yeah. So, oh, before I do that. To you, I know all about to you. I went to Alabama yeah. State University oh, for a little while. So man. I know all about Oh, they really, I'm so sorry to hear that, but uh, I, I respect the HBC out. love. Okay, okay. That's I transferred out. I went to Auburn University in Montgomery, so it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I, I can respect that. it. Yeah, I get okay. it. Back, yeah. <laughs> so talk to us about your gym culture. Tell us what's going on. How is it up there? Let us know a little bit of things. So I love my gym because, you know, first, it's a great community. I moved to Springfield initially. Um, like I said, I came from a little small town gym in Charleston, Illinois, moved to Springfield. Didn't have, a, I don't have any family or anything here. I moved to pursue my clinical license and social work. Uh, so, but I, I quickly found out, you know, to take a village to, you know, in order to kind of be safe and find that, that, that space. And uh, Real Splitter offered that for me. It was a great community, great coaching. Um, and then I think that they, they drove the point home even harder during COVID, you know, Greg Glass would start saying the nonsense uh, and they actually draw, drop the, the CrossFit moniker and change to FitCo. You know, he's like, you know, we don't need to continue to be a part of this space or try to be a part of this space when he's, he's, he's uh, kind of isolating some members that we have. And honestly, I think we probably have one of the most gym, diverse gyms in this area. You know, you, you don't, you know, 
for a fact, when you go to CrossFit outside of the, you know, Atlanta area, most of the gyms, you might catch one or two black people in that space. So, you know, I really pride ourselves, like we got a decent handful of people and we're starting, even we got some open gym members that are starting to come in uh, and, and to share that, that space and continue to diversify that space. So it's amazing. Okay, perfect. So tell us about your favorite workout. What does it look like? Favorite workout. Um, okay, so this is this is interesting. I'm I'm a little weird because like I mentioned earlier, I'm a big guy, but I, I'm not a fan of gymnastics, but I don't mind them. Like, right. Okay. So so if it's like a long, I'm a fan of a chipper, a long, grueling workout where I can just kind of mentally check out and just get through, you know, movements, 20, 30 minute AMRAPs. Uh, like that's my jam. That's my space. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about any challenges that you've had in your fitness journey. Um, a lot of my, my I would say my challenges have been personal you know, with just being okay. consistent, you know, the ebbs and flows of life kind of come and go and not realizing that you take or realize you've taken that step back from the fitness journey or the fitness goals. And, you know, for me as a therapist, I recognize or started to recognize how impactful being in this space is, how much I utilize this to decompress from a long day of talking to people about their problems that I need to find a way to separate and take care of myself. So, so, you know, CrossFit offers that for me. And, and this is how, you know, again, I, I kind of take care of myself with this space. Okay. So when you start lifing, as I call it, and you kind of get derailed, um, mm -hmm. what advice would you give somebody on a fitness journey that kind of gets derailed? Mm, I would honestly say, you know, it happens. It is the, I had a friend say, this is a season of life. And if you start to look at it that like that, it's a season of life. You, you understand that, Hey, you're going to, you know, have some days where you go in the gym, you're going to be able to PR every single day. You know, you're hitting heavy lifts, but then those days where you don't, you know, those days where you're struggling to kind of get in the gym and struggling to get it moving, those are the days that make you better, honestly. You know, the PR days, anybody can hit, you know, finally get that PR and be excited about it. But when you can really find that motivation within yourself to, hey, you know, this is a bad day, but I can accept the fact that it was a bad day because I had all this other stuff going on. Or, you know, being honest with yourself, I haven't given the time and the energy and effort to be where I was when I was hitting those PRs. You know, so just kind of be, be willing to accept. The, uh, the it's a piece in therapy that kind of comes up acceptance and commitment, right? I accept the fact that I made these mistakes or I, I haven't done or put in enough work to be here, but also recognizing I am committed to change and committed to 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 riding the ship, if you know if you say. Nice, nice. I love that. So talk to us about your go-to snack. It could be anything. It could be good. It could be horrible. <laughs> what is your go-to snack? My two snack is anything salty and savory is probably what my wife would say. Uh, you know, I'm, I sweet stuff, I'm okay with it, but like the salty, savory stuff, like I'm a fan, I'm a foodie at heart. So yeah, I like okay. the food with some good seasoning and, you know, something like, man, I look back, I need to try that again. Or I want that again, you know, multiple times. So, so anything sweet and salty, I mean, uh, you know, salty and savory uh, chips are probably my biggest vice. You know, some hot okay. Cheetos. And I, so I call it the hood, make some hot Cheetos with the sour cream and onion ruffles. Man, they fire together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, okay. So tell us, um, tell us how you would encourage somebody that is completely overweight. They're intimidated mm -hmm. to step foot into a gym. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you would encourage them to get started. Since you're a head coach, what would you do to get them in? To get them in. Um, mm -hmm. sheesh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I, I think again, I, I come back to therapy because I find so many parallels between the fitness space and then the mental health mm -hmm. space. Um, and, okay. and recognizing, you know, right, I think the biggest barrier to people, um, because I was even one of those people, I started at 300 pounds when I started CrossFit, uh, and I'm down a lot now, but even just, you know, so one, being able to relate to that and understand, like, hey, yeah, I, I share this, I can empathize, uh, you know, I'm here with you, I've been there with you, um, but also it's, it's not about, you know, stepping into the space, trying to be that elite athlete. It's about stepping into the space and being your genuine self. It's about doing what you are capable of, you know, and, and checking that ego at the door. 
you know, I am a, as a head coach, I'm a big proponent of, hey, we need to make sure we back down. We need to scale, you know, start where you are because I'm not a fan of injuries. You know, they happen, but we can do, we need to do everything that we can to prevent them. So, you know, if, if the goal is to be fit, let, let's identify those initial goals, what you're looking for, not what that person is, you know, over there doing muscle ups is, is doing. But yeah, if your goal is to get to muscle ups, let's take that step back and get to a ring row. Let's get to a body row. Let's get to you even just being able to put yourself off the ground. And that's your start. That's your baseline. And we can continue to build from there. So, again, I guess it's establish or look, look to establishing your baseline, what you can do, and then you can grow from there. Nice. I love it. So give us three goals that you have, whether that be personal, whether that mm -hmm. be fitness, um, or maybe just give us a mix of all three, work, fitness, and life. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start with the life one because I think this is something okay. that I've read as over the last year, especially, you know, getting married and, and, and looking into myself, digging deep is being more present, right? You know, okay. I, I recognized how overwhelming the, you know, being a therapist in an agency and, and trying to be a coach and trying to run a private practice, how overwhelming and, and that was for me and how present I wasn't when I got home. I had nothing left to give, you know, the wife was working from home a couple of days a week, and it's, you know, for me, it's like, I'm, I have nothing left emotionally to give to this space. So recognizing, again, in order to be present, some things had to kind of be checked out, you know, and, and in mm -hmm. order for me to show up as my genuine self, in order for me to show up holistically. So, yeah, the, the goal, one of the goals that I have moving forward is to is to do what you need to do to be present. OK, okay? okay. So that's that's the first one. Um, let's see. The second one would be OK with failure, uh, okay. I, I guess. I guess that's a, it's not necessarily a goal, but, you know, just a way, something to kind of look at life, but um, let's see, goal, consistency will probably be that second goal for me. Um, again, recognizing that now I'm into in a space where, you know, I'm juggling two different hats with the private practice and, and coaching that I have to be consistent for myself. I can be there for other people, but I also need to be there for myself and my workouts and my routine and those things. And I think that also ties into being present uh, and then the last one would probably be do what makes you, you happy, continue to be, you know, find ways that are going to make you happy, find ways that are, that are going to allow you to show up. Um, so I guess that is a, an overall goal for me as well. Okay. Any fitness goals? Um, no, I think all those, all those tied into fitness is, is being present, okay. being consistent and showing up, you know, all of those okay. things are, are, are all, I mean, they, like I said, they tie into that fitness space for me is because if, if one thing is off, then again, I'm starting to fall off with the fitness space. I'm starting to put too much investment in, you know, these other areas and I'm not allowing myself to be present or committed to fitness. So yeah, the, all three of those things tie into that, that allow me to be present and whole for fitness. Nice. Um, two models that you live by. Um, one is again a, a Tuskegee thing. Uh, let's see, is this the, is oh, the book? No. Of, oh, yes, no. yes, yes. A man, <laughs> P. Washington. A man is not defined by the uh, the the platform or the status he has reached, but by the obstacles he has overcome. Like, you know, I've lived my life through that. I come from Gary, Indiana. So, you know, I've overcome a lot of obstacles. I got a lot of lived experiences. Um, but just recognizing that, you know, success, success isn't defined where, you, where you've reached. It's all those obstacles you have to go over to finally reach that, play, that point, that point of view, and never forget those obstacles. Um, and then, let's see, another motto. Well, that's a good one. I can't think of one. Well, give, give me a second for that one. But, yeah. Yeah, let's see, okay. another motto. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about a second. It's okay. One. We can it. circle back. It's okay. Right. So the next part of this interview that we're going to do, it's called Turning Tables. And mm -hmm. Turning Tables allows you to ask me any questions that you might have that I can mm -hmm. answer. You so, sure you want to do that? What you got? All right. All right. So one thing, I guess, yeah, what, what, what does your self-care look like? Because I think that's important. Um, my self care is. Uh, what does it look like? Waking up every day between four thirty in the morning and five o'clock to mm -hmm. start my day. Whether that's a workout, whether that is a bike ride, um, and really just getting my day started um, in a peaceful way because I don't really 
do a lot of chaos and all this other stuff mm-hmm. throughout my day. So just very simple to walking outside, going to my gym with my clients, working out, sharing space with my wife, just something easy and simple. Like mm-hmm. I try to live a minimalistic life and just try to be present in every moment. And as long as I can be present in every moment, that is one of the best self-care things that I can do because I always have a million and one things going on. Mm -hmm. So I like to pause and stop as often as I can, especially owning two businesses. It's a lot. And supporting small business owners, I just have to reserve some space for myself. Yeah, I I, hands down, I respect that. I love (laughs) things. Um, Then what does your ideal workout look like? Um, My ideal workout looks probably something with some double unders probably something with some power cleans wall balls mm. handstand push-ups or ghd sit up i mean anything yeah, like i'm yeah. to be honest i've just my journey has evolved so much that mm-hmm. i don't really not look forward to things like i find a reason to look forward to doing a movement or a workout or challenging myself um in a different way so yeah. anything i'm down with it let's do it okay okay i love it um and then i guess what's the biggest thing you've taken away from your crossfit journey or your fitness journey um the biggest thing i've taken away kindness mm. i think you just have to be very kind no matter if you're talking about yourself, mm-hmm. you got to be kind because sometimes you might try to hit a move and you can't. Um, no matter if you're talking about a client, no matter if you're telling somebody about your story or you're listening to somebody's story, I think just kindness. I think yeah. the world just needs a lot more of it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I love to hear. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got. I'll leave it at that one because I think that's a good one to put a P in there for everybody. All right, perfect. So, Marvin, tell people about your business and if you are taking on new clients or anything that you have going on and how they can support you. This is your time to let them know. So, fill it. Yes, uh, Be Strong Mental Health and Therapeutic Services uh, is a mental health private practice here in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, I primarily focus on generational and emotional trauma. Uh, anxiety, PTSD, all those things are uh, associated with it, with it as well. Uh, but my goal as a therapist is, is to help people reconnect with the nervous system associated with all of those, you know, maladaptive behaviors and things that are that have been instilled unintentionally in us throughout development. So when you can reconnect that nervous system, you have a better chance to stay regulated and being present and being and showing up as your whole self. Um, I, I am accepting patients again. I, I started in, uh, I actually transitioned in May, uh, to full-time in my private practice. So, Hey, if you, if you want to, if you're in Illinois, uh, hands down, I can reach out to you. I do in-person sessions here in Springfield, but also I uh, do teletherapy across the entire state uh, of Illinois. Uh, the, you can reach me at bestrongmh.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, bestrongmh and then Facebook, bestrong mental health. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. The only other question I have is when are we going to get you down for the Atlanta Masters Classic? So, so I think it's going to be a strong next year. There's a strong okay. on next year, uh, only because like this past year, I had a lot going on. We actually went to Iceland and then the year before... Nice. I wasn't, I don't think I was old enough maybe the year before I was, I missed that cutoff. Uh, so now okay. I'm finally in the bracket and I finally got the time to, to invest in it. So yeah, you, you, you might see me down there next year. Perfect. That sounds good. All right. Hold tight real quick. That's all we got from Marvin. You all, please make sure you follow him on social media, inbox him, drop him a line. If you need some therapy assistance, he is your guy. He is the plug when it comes to your mental health. So be sure to check him out. Thank you so much, Marvin. Thank you.